In a previous lecture, we discussed electromagnetic radiation and we said all types of electromagnetic waves carry energy. Now because electromagnetic waves carry energy, that basically implies that electromagnetic waves also carry linear momentum. Now when an electromagnetic wave hits the surface of some other object, it will exert a force onto that surface in the same exact way as a solid object would exert a force on that surface when it hits that surface. Now we define radiation pressure as the force per unit area that is exerted by the electromagnetic wave onto the surface of that object when it hits that object. So let's suppose we have a single beam of electromagnetic radiation as shown that is propagating through space. So we have alternating regions of electric fields shown in green and alternating regions of magnetic field shown in blue. Now as the wave propagates it carries energy and it carries linear momentum. Now when this beam of electromagnetic radiation hits the surface and if the surface completely absorbs this beam of electromagnetic radiation that is none of it is actually reflected then all that energy stored inside the electric and magnetic fields will be absorbed by the surface and that means all the linear momentum will also be absorbed by our surface and the equation that gives us the quantity of linear momentum absorbed by the surface is given by this formula. So, the change in our momentum delta P, the quantity of momentum absorbed by the surface, is equal to the quantity of energy absorbed by the surface delta U divided by C, where C is simply the speed of our electromagnetic radiation. Now, let's actually derive the following equation. But in order to derive this equation, we have to consider electromagnetic waves to be composed of tiny particles. This concept is known as the wave-particle duality of electromagnetic waves and we'll talk about this concept in greater detail in a future lecture. Now, if we consider our electromagnetic wave to consist of tiny particles, then that basically means that the force that is needed to bring each particle to rest is given by Newton's second law of motion. The force is equal to the change in our momentum divided by the change in time. Let's label this equation as equation 1. Now, to derive this equation, we essentially have to relate our delta P, the change in momentum, to our energy. So we have to relate the force to energy. Now, recall the quantity of energy that is absorbed by the surface when this photon, when this tiny particle hits the surface, is given by this equation. So the work done, the delta U, is equal to the force exerted on the surface multiplied by the displacement, our change in X, the change in position. Now, if we take this equation and rearrange it and solve for the force, we see that the force that the surface feels as a result of our collision between our electromagnetic radiation particle and the surface is equal to the quantity of energy absorbed by the surface, delta U, divided by delta X, our change in position. So let's label this equation as equation number two. So now we take equation one and we rearrange arrange our equation 1 and we solve for delta P because we want to find an equation for delta P in terms of delta U and C. So delta P is equal to force 
multiplied by delta t. Now force from equation 2 is equal to delta u divided by delta x. So we replace force with this ratio. Now, this is equivalent to bringing our delta t to the bottom as shown. So our delta p is equal to delta u divided by delta x divided by delta t. Now delta x divided by delta t is simply the distance divided by the time. This is the speed of our moving electromagnetic radiation of our moving particle. Now delta x divided by delta t is equal to the constant c because in empty space electromagnetic radiation travels with a constant speed given by C. So we can replace this with C and we see that delta P, the quantity of linear momentum that is completely absorbed by the surface is equal to delta U divided by C as shown in this equation. Now notice that delta U is simply the quantity of energy that is completely absorbed in a time given by delta t by our object surface. Now, on the other hand, if the beam of electromagnetic wave is completely reflected off of the surface and none of it is absorbed, then the momentum transferred is equal to the following result. And we can calculate this by following a similar procedure. So delta P is equal to 2 multiplied by delta U divided by C. Now if some of that radiation is absorbed and some of that radiation is reflected, then the equation becomes Becomes delta P multiplied by some factor A multiplied by delta U divided by C where that factor A is a value between 1 and 2 where 1 is the coefficient in front of this delta U and 2 is the coefficient in front of this delta U. So using these two equations we are now ready to define we are now ready to define the equation for radiation pressure the pressure that is caused by electromagnetic radiation that hits the surface of an object now recall from our discussion on the pointing vector, we were able to show that du dt, the rate of change of our energy per time, is equal to the product of s and a, where s is known as our pointing vector. Now s is equal to the following result, 1 divided by a multiplied by du divided by dt. So if we we multiply s by a, the a's will cancel and we're simply left with du divided by dt. So this was shown in our lecture, in our discussion on the pointing vector. Now, Let's begin by looking at equation 1. So equation 1 will essentially give us the radiation pressure that is felt by the surface of an object when all that electromagnetic radiation is completely absorbed by our surface. So the pressure, generally speaking, is equal to force divided by the area. Now we know force from this definition of our force is equal to dp divided by dt. This essentially comes from the second law of motion, from Newton's second law of motion. So dp dt multiplied by 1 divided by a. Now, what exactly is dp? Well, well, dp, according to this equation, is equal to du divided by c. So we can replace dp with du divided by c, and we divide that by dt and multiply it by 1 divided by a, which comes from these two terms. So now notice what we have. We have du divided by dt, which is essentially the product s and a, where s is our pointing vector. So we can replace this 
with S multiplied by A. So now we have A on top and bottom. We can cancel that A out and we see that the pressure as a result of the electromagnetic radiation that is absorbed, completely absorbed by the surface is equal to S divided by C where S is the pointing vector and C is the speed of light. This equation gives us the radiation pressure when it is fully absorbed by our object, by the surface. Now, following the same exact procedure, we can determine the radiation pressure when all of that energy is completely reflected. So the pressure is equal to force divided by area, where force is given by dp divided by dt according to the second law of motion. Now dp from this equation is equal to 2 multiplied by du divided by c. So we replace dp with 2 du divided by c. So we have this multiplied by 1 divided by A divided by DT. Now we combine DU divided by DT, which is equal to S multiplied by A. So we have 2 multiplied by S multiplied by A divided by C times A. Once again, A appears on top and bottom. We divide through by A and we see that our radiation pressure, when the radiation is fully reflected, is equal to 2 multiplied by S, the pointing vector, multiplied by C, the speed of light.